Two-in-one devices don't just have physical keyboards. They have virtual ones as well that impact how we design apps for them. On mobile, we've had to deal with virtual keyboards for quite a while. Whether it's a large mobile device or a small one, half the screen space is usually taken up by a virtual keyboard. The same thing is true on larger touch-based devices. Consider a tablet or an undocked two-in-one. Here, half the screen once more goes to the virtual keyboard. Why does that matter? Let's take a look at a simple form interaction when a virtual keyboard is up. Here, when trying to book a flight, you can see that the controls that allow me to select a date are almost inaccessible when that keyboard is showing. So how do we account for this in our designs? Here's a couple techniques we can apply. One technique we can use is to embrace that virtual keyboard and position our inputs right on top. So here we've got a comment field and a send button on top of that virtual keyboard positioned front and center allowing for easy input and access to our primary controls. Here's another example of this technique. Once again, there's our comment field and our send button front and center. Now we're not just limited to a single input field right above this virtual keyboard. We can actually have a series of input prompts. Here on Twitter, when I go to compose a tweet, you'll note that the virtual keyboard is up, but so is a button allowing me to add a location, to access the camera, or to make my way over to my photo library. Some operating systems actually use input prompts by default on top of virtual keyboards. In Apple's iOS, when filling in a form, I get some helper actions that allow me to move between the fields in the form or let the form know when I'm done filling it in. These controls augment the existing interface in a positive way. But when that virtual keyboard is up and those form helper actions are there with them, a lot more screen space is gone. So solutions inside my form that rely on vertical screen space to work might not be optimal. Let's see what happens with an autocomplete. I'll enter the first part of my email address, and then when I make my way to the second part, you'll see a series of autocomplete actions show up below. However, due to the virtual keyboard and the form helper actions, I can't actually see those controls. So vertical orientations may not be best suited for these touch-based interfaces. Instead, we can consider horizontal controls. Here, on SnapGuide, when filling in the title, I have a series of tag inputs that make great use of the amount of space they have available to them. Tag inputs aren't just limited to input fields. They can actually be used for input in a lot of other situations as well. For example, selecting a restaurant time within a display page, or anywhere where you need to collect some information in a limited amount of vertical screen space. Virtual keyboards are part of touch interfaces, and we need to design accordingly. Consider when the virtual keyboard is up, half your screen space is gone. On top of that keyboard, you can position primary inputs, whether they're buttons or input fields. That makes them front and center and easily accessible to people as they're entering text. Also, vertical controls might not be as well suited to some input scenarios as horizontal ones, like tag inputs, especially when that virtual keyboard is eating up half your screen space. Thank you.